Brixton Energy is a community group which came together from different parts of other community groups, from community draft busters, from transition town Brixton, and then also local residents. All these people wanted something different. And so for about 13 months, we developed the project. As one of the directors, I focused on trying to create a financial model which could be shown to councils and to the private sector to show this is a financially viable company, but it's going to be structured in a different way. We had to explain in a political landscape, which has changed eight times over the last two years, that yes, everything was in the right place, and yes, it would, it would be successful. And of course, they responded saying, but with all these changes, how will that financial model work? And we had to show that there is a will from government, there is a will from the private sector, and there is a will from the people to make this work through tenacity and hard work of every single person on a 10-person team and 150 local investors, we were able to generate for this project here 60,000 pounds in three weeks to install a project which feeds the, the lighting, uh, the, all the communal spaces in this building. The system is very high grade and is producing the energy and as well as getting in the feed-in tariff and the energy is being sold on, into the building and then onto the national grid. It generates a re revenue and in the first year we're paying out our, our revenue, uh, which we, we promised, um, up to 3% and we're paying out this 3% this year, as well as all the maintenance and administration and putting aside money just in case the inverters, you know, all the due diligence, all the technical, all the admin, it's all sorted and we're paying back and we're producing 17% above what we said we were going to do because we went super conservative because we wanted everybody to believe. So outperforming would be in our benefit and we have outperformed and we actually got match funding for our community energy efficiency fund. Clearly being successful in the first year will aid the next projects. This project sits in front of you about 200 meters to our left is another project. The success of one makes the next work. So the second project was installed and it generated, it is generating but until those annual share payments are made, they won't feel the same. The solar panels will generate energy in the UK. What about, why don't we do it in, you know, in Kenya, we, my, my aunt should have this. But here, it's always rainy, it's always grey. Engaging with people, there was that first time. But we showed that it, it, it worked. We showed examples of how it worked, and, we, and the solar panel making workshops really facilitated that. When you have young people from the local estate making their own solar panel, and then being able to plug in their iPhone or Nokia into it, it changes the way they look at the project. It gets engagement. Community engagement starts with asking people what they want, not telling people what they need. There are tons of people out there who want to be a part of their local, of investment, of social responsible investment, of renewable energy, of community engagement, of helping to do something for fuel poverty, of creating jobs. And they have pensions, they, have, they give to charity, but if they knew that they could help their local community, they would do that. This community, while they're vulnerable in many ways, are intelligent and have aspirations not to leave necessarily the state, but to live in a better world. And they know about renewables, they know about solar, and if they don't, they're open to learning if you communicate that to them. It only takes the structure so, for instance, transition towns created a model and then they popped up in different places. Repowering is trying to do something similar, except what we do is we provide the background legal and structural and financial and marketing base to be able to co-produce with community groups. Determining where to put the solar panels had more to do than the best solar gain. It had to do with what was viable under planning permission, which had the best roofs. Even working with Lambeth alone, there are a thousand buildings. This was our first project. Our second project was on the same estate. The third project was on another estate uh, just up the road. And now there are four or five other projects which are in development. The landscape of the feed-in tariff has changed dramatically over the last couple of years. But it's still financially viable. This 37.24 kilowatt system which generates about 280 kilowatts in a sunny day and about 50 kilowatts in a day like today, 
is getting 15.2 pence. It's above the 10 kilowatt threshold, so it fell in that range. Whereas on another roof, we had five small roofs and putting in 50 kilowatts, we just put just under 10 on each and we received 14.5. Clear direction from the national government to say we want community-owned renewable energy is helpful. There's a community energy contact group in DEC now, and they are working with strategy and policy to make it m more viable. Baker and Tilly report that came out this year stated there was 3.6 gigawatts of potential for community-owned renewable energy. If the government recognizes that that community-owned renewable energy can deliver these outcomes and helps to facilitate that with the feed-in tariff, then we have the potential to develop not 37.24 kilowatt systems or even 100 kilowatt. We can develop megawatts of energy through solar, through CHP, through wind, onshore, offshore. There is no reason why this can't be a revolution of energy. And it starts with solar, such a simple technology which can be put onto almost all of these buildings and to generate a really incredible baseload. This project's viability has been demonstrated by winning the UK Sustainable Finance Awards, uh, being ranked as top 100 project by KPMG. The people want it to work. The councillors see that in the local community and the national government has seen that and recognizing that it has been a success. Turning around, I can say to you, this is decentralized, cooperatively owned renewable energy. The cooperative part is the key because we co-produce with individual people, residents, the council, the private sector, what they want, as, and it fits into our overall objectives, which is to create well-being.